with regards to differentiating the three most common inflammatory arthritis, um, these are rheumatoid arthritis, psoriatic arthritis, and axial spondyloarthritis, hyphen ankylosing spondylitis. Um, there is an overlap in that all three disease groups can affect the peripheral joints, but they differ in that rheumatoid arthritis, uh, for reasons that are really not that clear to me, tends to affect the small joints of the hands and feet most commonly, but can affect any joint. It tends to exclude the sacroiliac joints and the spine other than the cervical spine. The cervical spine can be involved with rheumatoid arthritis. Um, although tendonitis hyphen enthesopathy can happen in patients with rheumatoid arthritis, it's not one of its common features. So patients who present predominantly with small joint involvement that's symmetric um, and don't have features of other rheumatic diseases will most likely have rheumatoid arthritis. And as mentioned previously, this could be supported by checking a rheumatoid factor or a CCP antibody or imaging studies that show the classic findings. Psoriatic arthritis, and I really tend to call this something different now. Rather than calling it psoriatic arthritis, I really call it psoriatic disease. Um, is a much different entity. Back in 1974, there were a set of criteria that were devised by two rheumatologists, Mole and Wright. And these were the Mole and Wright classification criteria for psoriatic arthritis. And they included very different phenotypes. So the phenotypes that were included were an oligoarticulaform, which was four or less joints, a polyarticular form, which was more than four joints, a mutilans form, which is very classic for psoriatic disease where you have telescoping of the digits and complete destruction of the joints, and an axial form that tended to affect predominantly the sacroiliac joints but could affect the spine in any location, tended to be asymmetric. So psoriatic arthritis, from the perspective of clinical differentiation from rheumatoid arthritis, can have all of those patterns. Again, just being focused on the musculoskeletal element here, um, axial disease or sacroiliac disease would not be common at all in rheumatoid arthritis, but is one of the Mullen Wright um, subtypes of psoriatic disease. Um, additionally, psoriatic disease tends to have much more enthesitis than um, rheumatoid arthritis. The last entity, axial spondyloarthritis, as the name implies, um, really focuses on the axial skeleton. And we've subdivided this into non-radiographic and radiographic disease, but generally it does tend to have sacroiliac involvement. So from a strictly musculoskeletal perspective, uh, these three entities really have different presentations. I should say that axial spondyloarthritis also has enthesitis as one of its components. The other way to differentiate between these conditions is that their extra-articular manifestations are very different. For example, in rheumatoid arthritis, you can have ocular involvement, and that ocular involvement tends to be scleritis. You can have pulmonary disease, which is less common in ankylosing spondylitis or axial spondyloarthritis or psoriatic arthritis. You can have nodular disease. The rheumatoid nodule does not happen in ankylosing spondylitis or in psoriatic arthritis. Whereas psoriatic disease overlaps a little bit more with axial spondyloarthritis in terms of its extra articular manifestations. Um, clearly psoriasis is present in most patients who have psoriatic arthritis, although not all. It is uh, much less common in rheumatoid arthritis, and even though it can be seen in axial spondyloarthritis, it is much less common as well. Patients with psoriatic arthritis can also have ocular involvement, 
And that is a completely different presentation than patients with rheumatoid arthritis. They tend to have uveitis. And a differentiation point between the uveitis that patients with psoriatic arthritis have and axial spinal arthritis or ankylosing spondylitis patients have is that the type of uveitis is different. Patients with ankylosing spondylitis and axial spinal arthritis have an acute anterior recurrent uveitis, whereas patients with psoriatic arthritis can have that, but they can also have intermediate pan-uveitis and posterior uveitis that can be chronic. So the differential diagnosis then, in summary, um, really focuses um, across three different lines. I think the first is that the type of musculoskeletal involvement in these three diseases is different. Um, the second is that there are extra articular manifestations that can help you differentiate between these. One that I neglected to say but that I should add is inflammatory bowel disease. Inflammatory bowel disease is very common in patients with axial spondyloarthritis, much less common in psoriatic disease, and really non-existent as a co-manifestations manifestation in rheumatoid arthritis. So these extra-articular manifestations help us with the differential diagnosis. And the third point that I wanted to make is that sometimes there is overlap. And um, as we think about these diseases, although we try to categorize them into very specific disease processes, sometimes our immune system doesn't behave that way.